Hi, it's me again. I'm on my second week of law school, but I haven't been able to document the past few days because it has been incredibly busy with all of the readings I think I will never be able to keep up with. But anyway, 30 minutes from now will be my crim class and I'm reviewing for that one, but there's less pressure because the recitation there is voluntary. So I just need to recite in one case that I know, which is People versus Estrada. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm studying People versus Estrada, which I've already read. So it's mostly just refreshing myself on the facts, the issues, and the ruling. So going back to People versus Estrada, I'm going to try practicing how I will recite this case. So please note, I am just on my second week, so I probably won't be able to do this as well as I should, but here goes. In People versus Estrada, the facts of the case are as follows. We have Roberto Estrada, who was charged by, who was convicted of murder. Ah! Okay, one more time. I have to get my terminologies right. That's so hard. But anyway, in People vs. Estrada, the facts of the case are as follows. Roberto Estrada was convicted of murder and found guilty beyond reasonable doubt and sentenced to death by the Regional Trial Court of the Gupan. However, his counsel appealed to the Supreme Court arguing that the lower court made an error in finding Estrada guilty since Estrada apparently has a psychological disorder and should have been given a proper mental examination prior to the conviction of the case. Going back, I actually got the main issue wrong because this case is under the classical theories on criminal law, so I should be focusing on the accused's insanity. Okay, so let's try that again. The lower court made an error in finding Estrada guilty despite the overwhelming evidence of his insanity. Because under the classical theory of criminal law, uh, criminal acts are done with freedom, intelligence, and intent. That's why an exception of criminal liability is insanity since one of the elements, which is intelligence, is missing from the criminal act. And in the particular case of People vs. Estrada, the accused's counsel provided several evidences of Estrada's psychological problems and requested for a mental examination of Estrada. However, it was denied by the court on the grounds that he was that Estrada was able to answer intelligently during the pre-trial sessions. I don't know what it's called. Well anyway. Ah, oh, this is so hard. I have to memorize the terms too. My class is about to start and I don't think I have mastered the recitation for People vs. Estrada, but whatever, let's just do this and wish me luck. Okay, so I'm in the meeting, but it hasn't started yet, so I can still practice. One last time, we can do this. In People vs. Estrada, the facts of the case are as follows. We have Roberto Estrada, who was found guilty beyond reasonable doubt and sentenced to death by the Regional Trial Court of Tegupan for stabbing a security guard, Marara, who later on died. And this happened during a religious ceremony wherein when the bishop went down to give his final blessing, Estrada sat on the bishop's chair, so two people asked Estrada to leave. The second one being the security guard, Mararak, who tapped Estrada's hand twice as a warning. And on his third time to tap Estrada's hand with a nightstick, Estrada suddenly took out a knife and started stabbing Estrada. The police then arrived and were able to subdue Estrada. And these are the events that led to his conviction of murder. So... I don't know actually how to do this like after saying all of that what's the ending but 
we'll know after this. <laughs> but basically, the bottom line of this case is that the lesson we want to get here is all criminal acts should have three elements present, which is freedom, intelligence, and intent. And absent one of those elements, there can be qualified by a lot of things, exception from criminal liability. And the element specific here is intelligence because insanity, in insanity, you do criminal acts without intelligence. Okay, we have about two minutes left before my class. So I don't really know how to do the recitations yet. I'm just basing it on people saying it should be facts, issue and ruling ah that's when i forgot the ruling okay the supreme court then ruled that the lower court did indeed make an error make an error in finding estrada guilty so they reversed his conviction wait i think for rulings i'm supposed to say verbatim so let me just check so just really quickly, the Supreme Court then ruled that the previous decision of the regional trial, co trial court is nullified and the case is remanded. Good evening. Is everybody here? Bye. Okay, just to update, the case I was assigned to got skipped, so I wasn't able to recite, but that's fine, which means I have more time to study and maybe have a better chance of reciting my next case. Hopefully, I have time to practice for that. So that's it. It's time for me to cook dinner. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hi, it's me again. My face is oily from my skincare because it's 3 a.m. But I still have 19 cases to go, but I never skip skincare because priorities. But anyway, don't mind my wound the derma said it will smoothen and heal so just let it be anyway i just wanted to say i think it's impossible to finish all the cases in any subject i don't know how anyone does it like does anyone ever finish all the cases i doubt it but here i am trying to figure out a more efficient way of studying and i really hope I get the hang of it soon because I will be drowning in cases more and more as I continue to have backlogs. Well, anyway, that's pretty much it for now. And I'll go back to studying my 19 cases to go for just one subject. There's still like 20 more for other subjects. Plus a paper I have to finish by Friday. So, see you next time. Bye! Hi, good morning. It's 8 a.m. And I have legal history class, which is starting in a bit. So, I'll see you later. For me, based also on experience, I feel like law is a double-edged sword, is a tool that can be used to reward and to punish, to oppress and to defend, depending on how the person wields it. Say, for example, in a criminal case, there's always, well, we just study, so there's always two aspects in a criminal case. So if you, if you commit a criminal law, there's that criminal aspect where it's used to punish and then reward at the same time the person who was oppressed or who was whose right was infringed upon and as a tool maybe i just want uh as a tool against those it, depending on how they frame it if we can remember like years back with the impeachment of cj corona something like the sal and can be used by the legislative to as a tool against another branch of the government mm -hmm. <laughs>